All right, all, and welcome back to the preview of the day three of the Fairy House Easter Festival, obviously Easter Tuesday, and it is Monday at 10.51, so I don't know what's happened in the Irish Grand National yet, so don't quote me on anything yet. Hopefully our chances go well, our three Willie Mullins chances. But anyway, straight into the action on Tuesday. It's another decent enough card without being a world beater card. Starting off with a two mile four maiden hurdle of which the Liz Doyle Envols Piergy looks to be the one for me. Liz Doyle does very well with the sort of horses she has. She doesn't have that many in her care, but she does very well with them. This is one of her very few horses for JP McManus. And this Envol Piergy was second in a point to point before second in a maiden hurdle. Hurdle at Nace at 10 to 1. I think he should go very close. I think one that's probably a bang solid each way bet is La Tector for Tony Martin, but he's unfortunately coming a little bit frustrating. Momus, I just can't have. He seems to have second and third itis for me. The beginner's chase, I think I'd take a chance on Global Jackpot despite him coming off a very long layoff he seems to be primed for good ground races during the summer this is pretty good ground Gordon Elliott and Davy Russell he banged off three in a row uh, in the summer last year second last time out it's really from a lack of alternative Stowaway Forever doesn't seem to want to get his uh, nose in front or Jean de Somoza perhaps the likely threats then we move on to the Mare's Chase again. I rate this a two-horse race, to be honest, between Camellia de Cotte and Prav Laguna. I take the chance on Prav Laguna here. I think she's got a bit more class. I think Ruby Walsh is going to be booked on her because Paul Townend's on Camellia de Cotte. She was ninth in the JLT last time out. That was probably a bridge too far, but previously had been very impressive in two Mare's Beginners, a Mare's Beginners and then a Mare's Novice Chase grade three event like this. Camellia de Cotte has been a very upwardly progressive horse who was slammed in the face by Kaiser Black last time out. Now, Kaiser Black's a high-class sort, so no disgrace in that. I think it'll be between the two of them, but I'd start, I would side like uh, Ruby has probably sided with Brav Laguna over Camellia de Cotte. The Ladies National... Obviously, you're gone, not going to go far wrong with Rachel Blackmore in terms of like she could have a massive chance here on Surf Instructor, but it wouldn't really be for me. Two that do lo I do like here is Battling Spirit for Jonathan Sweeney and Katie O'Farrell. Katie O'Farrell, one of the other uh, professional female jockeys in Ireland, one last time out, seems to be a bit of a progressive force, seems to be getting things together. And also the church gate uh, for Matthew Smith ran out, well didn't run out was just got the door closed on him when Keith Dunhu was up on him last time out uh, it was a bit unlucky that time round two miles six if that suits this horse could be very well in he's very well in over hurdles in, or over fences in comparison to his hurdles mark the novice handicap hurdle over three miles is actually a very good race I've got uh, three in this actually I've got my sister Sarah I think it's very very interesting that um, Mullins is stepping her up from two miles to three miles. Walsh on board again. They obviously think a fair bit of her. She didn't really show in the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. Maybe it all went too quick for her. But uh, hopefully she can go well here. Magnium is a horse that's been banging his head off a fairly stern brick wall in graded races this year. Looks like a step up and trip might suit. And also back into handicap company. Doesn't seem to be out of it on handicap ratings Robbie Power in the saddle hopefully he can go well and one that I suspect will be a big price again like all these videos SP's not up yet but bootlegger for Eddie O'Grady Brian Cooper in the saddle right down at the foot of the weights won a maiden hurdle over two months six last time out uh, it seems to just be a, an upwardly progressive horse down at the foot of the weights might have been a bit of a plot the RYBO handicap hurdle is a very tough race, but I think it could be a big Willie Mullins day, to be honest. And he's got Mr. Adjudicator here, who's shaped superbly in the county hurdle. Um, it wasn't knocked about when beat, finished eighth. I thought that was a superb run. And one that I'll just continue backing till the day I die is Tudor City. Look, he's doubtful to go and win and won a race like this, but he could well place 17 runners, so there'll probably be four or five places on Paddy Power. The Hunter's Chase seems that sees the return of the legend that is on the fringe. Can he do it? Uh, it seems unlikely, but you'd have to back him for almost fourteen like sentiment. And Road to Riches ran a great race last time out in the top uh, in the Fox Hunters. 
at uh, Aintree, but two mile five, probably a little bit sharp from these days. Three mile one will suit better. And the mare's flat rates, two mile four. I really like this Larka Guze for Gordon Elliott. Seems to really will need this step up and trip. Has been unlucky not to have won yet. One that also could merit respect is Wendy Howell for Willie Mullins, a very well bred daughter of Yates. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video for the three days of the Fairy House Easter Festival. If you did, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel down below. And obviously there will be Punchestown Festivals uh, previews starting next week. So up until then, best of luck to you.